Intel was once a dominant force in the tech industry, a top chip maker in this space, but now has been struggling massively, losing market share to AMD, NVIDIA, Qualcomm, and many more. Their revenue is down. Their gross margins profitability has been down as well. It has not been a good past couple of years for Intel, but at these low prices here, down 33% year to date, past five years as well, down 33%. Are we nearing a bottom? And based on some still pretty good expectations for the future and the overall rise of the AI total addressable market, can Intel still have some pretty outsized gains here at these current low levels? I think it is likely. So we'll break down the fundamentals, the company expectations, and what I'll be doing with Intel stock. But first, let's break down Intel's key revenue segments as a business. They have a client computing group segment. They encompass the sale of desktop PCs, notebooks, and other consumer-facing products. This includes processors, chipsets, and other components for personal computers and tablets. Intel has historically had a strong presence in this market but faces increasing competition from AMD and others. They of course have a data center and AI group as well. The segment focuses on processors and other products for servers, workstations, networking products, and high performance computing. It serves enterprise customers, cloud service providers, and communication service providers. Intel's Xeon processors are a significant part of this segment. They have a network and edge group segment as well, which involves products that convert fixed function hardware to general purpose cloud native programmable hardware. It includes ethernet and 5G technology, network processors and other related hardware for edge computing and networking solutions. They have accelerated computing systems and graphics. The segment deals with high performance computing and graphics products. It includes Intel's discrete graphics processing units, GPUs and other products aimed at providing accelerated computing solutions. Mobileye, of course, this segment includes products related to autonomous driving and advanced driver assistance systems. Mobileye is a subsidiary of Intel that focuses on vision-based technologies for self-driving cars and driver assistance features. Intel Foundry Services as well. The segment is responsible for Intel's efforts to provide foundry services to other semiconductor companies. It includes the design and manufacture of semiconductor chips for external customers competing with companies like TSMC. And there's another smaller segment which includes smaller businesses and emerging technologies that don't fall into the main categories above software security and other miscellaneous items now despite the obvious issues with intel's business right now losing market share lower margins etc what is the bull case for this company and stock so there's an attractive valuation and potential overall intrinsic value is 18 percent higher than its current market cap based on some analysts here a target price of 37 dollars a bit above where we're at right now. There is some minor revenue growth here, 8.6% recently year over year and better profitability improvements. Still not where we were previously, but it's getting better. Intel also has strong AI and data center exposure bolstered by its Gaudi 3 AI accelerator, which claims better performance and power efficiency compared to Nvidia's H100 and is a significant R&D investment. So clearly that hasn't come to fruition just yet, but some bold claims which are good to hear and may work out very well for them in the near future. Intel's R&D budget is $7 billion larger than Nvidia's and about $10 billion higher than AMD's, positioning it to compete effectively in AI and data center markets now. A higher R&D budget doesn't mean you're going to succeed. Intel and AMD are doing more with less, but it means that Intel is determined to get their market share back and compete effectively again with these other companies. Intel's data center and AI business generated $3 billion in Q1 this year with partnerships from major cloud providers like Amazon's AWS, Microsoft Azure, and Google Cloud, ensuring long-term growth potential. Intel still dominates the x86 laptop CPU market with a 75% share significantly ahead of AMD, positioning it well for future AI-driven laptops. Of course, there are some good things going for it here. Is success a guarantee? Of course not, and they're well behind their competitors, but there are some obvious bull cases here and with intel being at multi-year lows it could be again a good time to be a contrarian investor and buy in when no one else wants to buy in and now for a clip here from cnbc where an analyst talks about the bull case for intel following the recent results here he is a bit objective he understands that there are clear issues here but also highlights the potential bull cases that we went through as well so here's the clip and then we'll talk about it but one bull is buying what Intel is promising. Melius, head of technology research, Ben Reitz, says his firm still thinks things will pick up in the second half of the year. So you believe him. You believe Intel. 
Well, look, this, is, this has been a roller coaster ride. Last year, we were on an island recommending this, <laughs> saw it go to 50, and now back down. We overstayed our welcome. But I, I think that people try to complicate this story. It's so PC driven, it's not even funny. It's over half the revenue. And PCs petered out, and we think they pick up in the back half. So Intel's a funny beast. You know, when they're beating numbers, they sound like geniuses. And then when things don't happen, you know, it, it's a pile on. And I think this is probably an overreaction. A lot of their peers are rallying. And the second half has a lot of catalysts. But right now is when you, you want to be thinking about buying it because gross margins potentially troughed. And if gross margins start to get better, stock falls. So you had mentioned that you, you put a buy on it, the stock went up. You yeah. were saying, just, you're welcome, so it's back to where you were before. What happened to PCs when the stock was at its height to now? Did you just get, did you get that call wrong? I mean, I'm just trying to understand, did, did that well, market turn suddenly and that was unexpected? Yeah, it did. Uh, uh -huh. What happened with PCs is we actually had some channel restocking. Uh, mm -hmm. People went back to work. Um, things started to pick up. And then, obviously, you know, we only work three days a week now. So... Uh, <laughs> So I think it lost a little momentum. Five, just yeah. three in the office. Yeah, I, I work. I work six. <laughs> okay. But, uh, but uh, I think that what's going to happen is we later in the year start to see PCs pick back up again. There's uh, expiration of support for Windows, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, that should be a corporate uh, catalyst. And Intel benefit. I mean, we've been pounding the table on like Nvidia and like Arista and a few of the names that are a little more pure Dell in hardware, and this has been the the one that round tripped. Ben, so put into context, you you. You frame the PC business, data centers where there's been massive erosion and they've been beaten yep. up over and over again. Um, it, it, should we care about that anymore? And, and, and ultimately, when we hear the company uh, yesterday saying, we, we, we think largely the business is bottomed, uh, again, it gets back to that credibility issue. Do they not yeah. have credibility? Well, the, I, mean, I guess it's clear they don't you, have credibility. Well, you can't cut gross margin and have anybody do. This stock just trades. When gross margin gets like it, it does and goes down, the stock's not going to work. But if we're in the trough, it will. Now, servers also are a big part of the business. They miss the accelerator trend like NVIDIA. They do have a new one that, if anything happens there, it's a bonus. They have Sierra Forest and another server that are ramping, uh, should have better sales in the back half with better ASPs, um, and that drives sequential growth. But no one believes now because gross margins went down, the execution isn't crisp. Once that picks up in the back half, though, and we have some catalysts because servers do seem to have bottomed, it does seem like they have the best chip for AI, the best CPU for AI servers, and they, they could benefit. But obviously, right now it looks bleak, but this has usually been the time to at least trade it. Mm -hmm. In the break, we were talking about how... Um not many of your clients own Intel. They yeah. abandoned Intel after that disastrous call on foundries and the losses that the company was going to see. And I'm just wondering, what, what does management need to communicate to convince investors that there is an upturn, that all the reasons that you laid out are there in front of them um, to get them back in, the institutions, that is? Well, look, they've cut gross margin the last two or three quarters, two quarters, um, and that, that's obviously, I just keep harping on it, but you, you can't be doing that. That's the signal of execution. That's the signal that you're loading your factories mm -hmm. and you're actually selling stuff. And you just don't have credibility when you, when you keep cutting it. Um, but the, the other thing, too, is there's a lot of people who don't believe in the AI PC, that who cares? You don't need a, you know, what we're going to be doing AI on the PC. I think that there will be a halo effect from AI that drags up servers on the edge as well as PCs, mm -hmm. and I think the Windows cycle uh, helps. And when they beat numbers and there's channel restocking, all of a sudden they'll look brilliant. Um, you know, just see the last half of last, you know, last year. Right. So, Ben, when you look at it, though, is there, is there a chance that it's more... You just addressed it in your last sentence, but is there a chance that NVIDIA, with its partnerships builds more to take away from NVIDIA, uh, Intel with their PCs. Intel, the revenue is 58%. As you said, it's over 50, right? It's 58% is PC-centric. But is there a chance that GPUs are really where the, where the puck is going and they'll, they'll lose on that front too? And then one little add-on. Is there, is there a need for new management? So instead of Melissa saying, hey, what do they have to say, is there a need for a new person to say it? Well, um, let's talk about, you know, the GPUs. So they missed it in servers, and they're getting on board late, and there is some upside there. But I think the whole AI trend can help the whole server market. You might need servers closer to where the data is once we start using it. 
But on the PC side, uh, NVIDIA's strategy is a little bit more sell the GPU, you know, their cards. Um, I don't think they're going to actually make a CPU. But um, I feel that, uh, you know, Qualcomm's getting into the business. We expect them to have a little bit of traction. But Intel, you know, really in corporate is the standard. And, and I think once that picks up, uh, Dell uh, will sell a lot too. And and they'll be they'll do a little better. So again, a company that is struggling on multiple fronts here, but the business is still a main player, especially in corporate America, is a legacy brand that at least as of now, people haven't fully given up on. And based on what we've been seeing, a recovery is entirely possible. Now with the chart here as well, the chart of course does not look good. We are at multi-year lows. We are down at prices, of course, we saw back last year and to late 2022, but also last seen in 2016, 2014, 2015, as well a huge fall off here from their recent terrible conference call they're losing market share again that's one of the main issues here Gr lower gross margins as well as the analyst indicates not good whatsoever for a company and especially the stock as well but right here seems to be an attractive point to potentially start or add to your position in a small way by no means would i ever go all in at current prices not that i don't like the price it's that i don't know the future uh, for this company the future is not certain i'm just looking at the risk to reward ratio and thinking it's not a bad time to add here there's still a big player in a huge multi-year secular trend of the ai market growing more and more companies wanting these cpus and chips and gpus etc to power their you know generative ai software their ai data centers they're all different systems like that they, they want these products here intel still is providing that uh, of course if they continue to struggle if margins continue to go down if they don't make good sh ships anymore then that's going to be a big deal here so there's still a risk of course but i still believe in intel i have an intel cpu in my computer that doesn't really mean anything but i still like intel i feel like they run better than the amd chips in my experience again that's a very personal thing there it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things but in my personal experience i still think intel is a good company on a larger scale can they execute i'm not so sure although i do think again at current levels it is a good time to take that risk and assume maybe they can Maybe they don't have a huge market share in the future, but they have enough to sustain some growth and have a decent rise in the stock price down at super low levels. So the chart, as I said, not too good. We're below the 200 day moving average, which is never a good sign for a stock here. Of course, we broke below a couple times back in 2020, 2021. Of course, we broke above that 200 day moving average back in 2023, and we saw a decent rise in the stock price here, but we broke right back down. And now potentially there could be a little more downside here although at these levels 32 bucks a share maybe down to 26 a share i don't see intel going much lower of course no one knows for sure what's going to happen here but right now seems to be again a good time to start or add to your position in intel stock now if you're bullish on intel and you want to potentially buy the stock at a cheaper price there are a couple strategies you can employ here option strategies to collect some money up front and potentially again buy the stock lower than where it's at right now so we're on the robin hood options chain here first we're going to sell a put we're going to pick an expiration date about a month out 33 days from now august 9th as of recording this video of course you could do this at any date but we'll do a month out for now we want to pick a strike price below the current price here so we're at 32 bucks a share let's say 30 bucks a share maybe even 31 now we'll do 30 that looks pretty good here so we're gonna click this cash secured put total credit 81 cents a contract controls 100 shares of a stock so times 100 we're gonna collect 81 dollars up front and how this works if you don't know is that on august 9th if intel is at 30 bucks or below we have to buy 100 shares of the stock at 30 dollars which will cost us around three thousand dollars or if intel on august 9th is above 30 bucks a share then we don't have to buy the stock and either way we collect 81 dollars up front so no matter what happens if i sell this put right now i will collect 81 dollars straight into my account no questions asked and on august 9th we'll see if the stock is below or above now the reason why you do this is because you could get extra money for buying the stock if you already want to own intel you don't mind owning it at 30 bucks a share then this is a great thing to do to get extra money to buy shares of the stock that you were already going to buy or if intel doesn't hit 30 bucks a share 
and you don't really want to own the stock anyway, you collected $81 and you don't have to buy the stock and that's it. And you could go about your day here. So it's a pretty good thing to do again, to get more money on a weekly or monthly basis or potentially buy a stock at a cheaper price here and get money for doing that as well. So pretty good strategy here. Selling puts is a pretty self-explanatory, safer thing to do in the market. Of course, if you're not bullish on Intel and you don't want to buy the stock at 30 bucks a share, don't sell a put. Now, if you still want to collect some money, you could sell a put at a lower price, maybe 28 bucks a share which is less likely to happen. The delta is super low, a 14% chance of Intel being at 28 bucks a share on August 9th here. So uh, less money up front, but less likely you'll have to buy the shares. And you know, again, in the, which is good if you're not that bullish on Intel, but I'm a little bullish on Intel. I think it is risky, but a recovery is entirely possible. So selling puts at 30, 31 a share doesn't seem to be too bad at current levels here. Now, there are other strategies you can employ here, other option strategies to make money on Intel's potential bullish upside over the next year plus which will break down on the channel in future videos let me know down below in the comment section if you want me to go through other option strategies like the poor man's cover call how to get huge upside on intel if you're bearish on intel what strategies could employ as well we'll break that all down in future videos if you guys do want to see that but for now intel definitely not a guarantee of course it is risky but i do think there is some clear upside based on what i've seen and there is a lot of bearish sentiment right now in the market towards intel sometimes it is good to be a contrarian investor and think you know what are people being overly bearish i don't think they are but it's getting to the point where they might be approaching that point so I don't know. Let me know down below your opinions on Intel. Of course, again, I would not go all in at current levels. I want to see a lot more from this company here, but right now starting a small position doesn't seem to be too bad, honestly. So let me know down below your opinions on Intel. We'd we'll be buying, selling, waiting on the sidelines. Let me know down below. Be sure to subscribe for more stock analysis videos like this, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out, guys.